So this is QuickBooks tutorial for insurance agencies. So if you run an insurance agency or a brokerage business, this uh, video guide will help you um, understand how to use QuickBooks to run your business. So the insurance agencies uh, here, uh, whether you do health or life insurance, um, auto insurance, travel insurance, home insurance, business owners insurance, or whatever kind of insurance you run, this um, insurance agency you run, this uh, QuickBooks tutorial will help you understand how to use um, QuickBooks on in managing your insurance agency business. So what is an insurance agency? An insurance agency basically acts on behalf of the policy holder. So they help them to uh, find the best insurance, compare insurance, and are able to also connect them to the right uh, insurance company for a commission. So that's how they work. Now, these guys actually work with, um, they are registered by uh, the states or the government, and also they have um, access to all the insurance providers. So insurance agencies and insurance brokerage uh, business uh, customization is a bit unique and I would want to uh, want to pay a lot of attention to how this customization uh, is done. Now, insurance agencies are quite unique because it's not like the normal retail uh, inventory-based business where you sell, you collect money. So this is not an inventory-based business. This is a service-based business and a lot of customization is required because when you collect premium from your customers, you are not supposed to recognize that money as yours. So you're not supposed to recognize a portion of that commission, of that premium as your own commission, and then disburse the other percentage to the insurance company based on your agreement. Sometimes this percentage will range from uh, 5 to 8%, depending on your region or the state law. Now, when you do that, your report is supposed to show you um, all the payables that you've, uh, you're supposed to remit to the insurance provider, which is the main insurance company, and then how much you have earned as income. So number two, when you go to your profit or loss account, the income portion of um, an insurance company is made up of the commission. So we're not supposed to see the premium that you have received. You're supposed to see the commission earned on that premium. The only um, uh, type of business that's supposed to recognize that premium as an income is the insurance company and that is if the premium is earned not when it's received so that's a topic for another day i just need to let you understand how unique um this customization is going to be and why i want to pay a lot of attention to this uh, setup so let's quickly do a review of what we'll be discussing in this video tutorial we'll be looking at how to set up a chart of account for an insurance agency We'll be looking at how to set up your bank account for premium payments and also disbursement to insurance providers, how to also set up policyholders who are also your customer records and are then able to categorize them by insurance types and their balances, meaning that if you wish to categorize your policyholders or your or customers by their insurance type, maybe you want to categorize customers that are under health insurance, under life insurance, under auto insurance, travel insurance, so that at the end of the day, your report will be a lot more organized and not necessarily lumping all the customers together. So here you can see, let's see customers that are that are subscribed to travel insurance. Let's see customers that are subscribed to auto insurance. Let's see customers that have subscribed to home insurance. You'll be able to see that. And then uh, we also have um, categorization of your insurance agency business. So if you do all of insurance, you might also want to categorize your insurance or segment your insurance by this department which is health life department auto department travel department home department so at the end of the day you're able to see all the revenue generated uh, by each of the departments and also the profit or the cost incurred in each department and what the profit and loss position of each department so that way you can also ascertain the most profitable insurance policies that you can sell out there for instance if you see that the most profitable insurance um type that you've been that, that that's actually helping to contribute to the overall company's bottom line is travel insurance so it's important for you to pay a lot of attention to travel and see how you can invest more in that since it's actually contributing a lot to the business so it tells you or it gives you an idea of what your 
customers or what policyholders are actually buying more than the other type of insurance. So we'll discuss that. And then we'll also show you how to add insurance providers and their payable balances. These insurance companies that you're working with, they are, uh, they are vendors. They provide services, direct services to your customer. So you also need to set up a money system and able to track how much is due to each of these insurance providers. Then you can also see how you make money. So we'll also show you how to capture your revenue, which is commission end from premium, and then how to also track direct costs, disbursement, when you disburse premium to these insurance providers, which is a direct cost to you, and every other related costs that, are, that helps you to drive insurance business, maybe uh, cost of advertising, the insurance operation. Then we'll look at revenue. How do you create an invoice for insurance policies? How do you capture the percentage commission? How do you receive payment either by cash transfer or credit card into a bank or cash account? Then we we'll look at how to record insurance expenses like advertising, office supplies and administration, staff salaries, sales or marketing expenses, or whatever um, expenses you, you, you incur as an insurance company. Then we we'll look at the banking transaction, how to record check, how to do transfer forms, how to use register, and then reconciliation. And then finally, we'll be looking at reports. Now, all that will be posting from the beginning to the end we most likely make up the financial reports that we have, meaning that if we have done the right posting, then we should be able to get the right income report, expense report, purchase report, inventory report, profit or loss by insurance type. Okay, like I said before, it's important for you to look at the profit and loss of each of these insurance segments, then your balance sheet, and then your cash flow, and any other kind of report, your trial balance that you want to generate. The system also gives you that option to do that. So let's head over to the software for demonstration. So the first one is to look at the chart of accounts. Now, this is a demo company that has been created for William Smith Insurance Agency. So when I when I discuss uh, QuickBooks tutorial or how to use QuickBooks for different line of business, the first thing I will always like to talk about is your chart of accounts. It's very important. Chart of accounts customization differentiates one business from another. How do you know that this company is an insurance agency or insurance brokerage business when you look at the income head like you can see right here you can see commission income but we don't want to call it call it commission income because this might not be the only uh company that ends commission so we want to still um edit the name and make it a little bit uh customized or tailored to an insurance company so we can probably come here and say commission on premium income so we can get it out it's already recognized as an income so commission on premium so you click save and close so commission income on premium received so you click on save and close so you can see right here so this is commission income on premium received so let's go back to our chart of accounts so here you can see right there so there are so many things to do set up on your, your direct cost is bus premium to uh, insurance providers. So you come back here, you check what's your direct cost on the system. Direct cost is not set up. You add a direct cost. Direct cost is also cost of sales or cost of goods sold. They are all, this, all the same. So what makes them different is the name you use. So you can, you can say premium is bus to insurer. So you click save and close so that's another direct cost so you can add as many costs as you want so you can see we already have advertising and promotion so what other uh costs do we have right here so we have commission on premium we have disbursement so there are other kind of you can, you can see staff salaries administration advertising sales or marketing expenses so let's assume again that um you pay your staff you have your marketing staff so you can as well add them as sales and marketing expenses sales and marketing so you have a lot of um account heads to add here like i said in my previous videos the most important thing you need to ensure that you select you know, appropriately when you're adding your chart of account is the account type because account type determines the type of report or the type of uh, how an account name or how a transaction 
that passes through an account name will be treated. For instance, if I create commission income as a uh, commission on premium as an income, it means any transaction that passes through this account name called commission on in premium, then it will be treated as an income transaction. Then any transaction that passes through premium disbursement to insurers, then that will be treated as direct cost or cost of sales. And then advertising and promotion, business license permit, whatever expenses you incur, the system gives you room to enter them on uh, on your chart of accounts. So this is the first thing you need to do, which is very, very important. Now, if you have fixed assets, there's room for you to enter your fixed assets. But basically, we want to look at customization for an insurance broker. Customization for an insurance broker. So the other part of our course outline is um, how to add your bank account for premium payments. That's also very important. How do we add our bank account? So you come here, you enter new, you select your bank, you click on continue, and then you can start adding your bank to the system. So here we can call this Bank of America right here. So you enter the balance in that bank account. And then we assume that our opening balance date is 31st. So if you also uh, let your customers to pay you online via PayPal, you can as well come here to add your PayPal wallets to track all payments from PayPal. PayPal wallet. So this is this lets you add all the bank accounts. So let's assume that we use Bank of America to receive all payment and also disburse to our insurers. So you can as well add every other bank account that you have as an insurance provider. So let's look at other areas. So policyholders, customer records as categorized by insurance type. So let's quickly categorize our business by health insurance, life insurance, auto insurance. Now, why do you need to do that? The importance is that we want to see the top performing insurance segment or insurance category in our business. So we're going to go to edit, preference, accounting so what am i trying to do i want to categorize my business just like you have in a department or in a supermarket so you can create a class to do that so activate class to departmentalize or segment your business into different types so i'll come to list class list so let's add different types of insurance that we, uh, services that we provide so we have health insurance then you have life insurance, auto insurance, home insurance, business insurance. So let's see um, if there are other kind of insurance that we're yet to impute. Okay, travel insurance. I think that's what's remaining. Travel insurance. So you click on OK. So with this, you will be able to departmentalize your operation. What is the essence? The essence is that whenever we want to generate a profit or loss account, we can also generate profit or loss by class. So it automatically displays each of these as um, in column, and you'll be able to see all the revenue earned from auto insurance, all the revenue earned from business insurance. All the revenue earned from health insurance, all the money earned from home, life, and also travel. So while we've done that, let's go to our customer center, which is where we add all policyholders. Now you have two options when you're customizing or setting up your customers. First is you can add them directly to the system without categorizing them by their policy. Second one is you can actually add their policy and also categorize each customer on that. Uh, there are various policy. The idea is when you generate your customer reports, system automatically categorizes your customer by various policies. So you will need to see the policies that each of the customers have subscribed to. And that makes your report a lot more organized. So I can as well come to new customer to add different policies. So health and life, or let's say health insurance. So I'm first I'm adding the parent category. Just watch I'm what I'm going to do. Um, life insurance to the system. Then we're adding auto insurance. Then I'm adding travel insurance. 
then I'm adding business. Business insurance. And then finally, we can do home. Home insurance. So we've added all the insurance type to the system. So how do we add the customers right now? You might probably add, you're thinking, are you not adding, you're supposed to add customers since you're clicking new customer. What we're trying to do is to add uh, customers under the relevant insurance. So to do that, we're going to use job. So we're going to use job to enter that so mr john mike we're going to add mr john mike under health insurance so you can see right here and then you come back to job you can add Jude smith under health insurance again so we have health insurance these are two policyholders that have subscribed for health insurance so let's go back to um job again now we can add this smart try to travel insurance now in a situation where you have a balance in the name of that customer let's assume that as at the point where we're setting up this system for our uh, william smith insurance agency this particular customer is owing or this particular customer has a receivable you can impute that right here but you know the way the business of insurance is insurance company is not going to be covering you if you have not paid so you're supposed to pay the premium ahead of time so that automatically tells you that it's most likely that you're not going to be owing the insurance company now the other question is what if they have a policy that is currently running what if they had a policy that is currently running how do you track that on the system so what you do on the system is to look at how much they paid as insurance. Let's assume they paid 1,000 USD for total insurance for a year. And so far, three months is gone. Or let's, okay, let's assume uh, 1,200 USD. That's like um, 100 USD per month. And three months is gone. That's like 300 already gone. So 300 out of 1,200 will give us 900. So that's the amount to remain. So what you're going to impute right here is going to be minus 900. Why are you using minus 900? They've made an advance payment. So if a customer has it, assume that they have a credit with you. But the reason we are not going to do it like this is because we are not the direct service provider. Do you understand? We are not the direct service provider. We are only a broker. The company, the type of business that's supposed to do this is the insurance company itself. So this is where you have gross premium received and then premium end and premium not end. So this will be a portion of the premium that's yet to be end. Those portions that are yet to be end are like a credit. That's why they sit in your book as a liability as an insurance company. But for a broker, you really don't need this to have avoid your book being messed up. So you come here, you just impute the name of the customer and then you click on OK. So the next one is we're going to add another job right here again. So let's assume you have like XYZ Tech Limited. They are undertaking insurance for their business. So you come here, you categorize them by business insurance. And then you can as well come to job. So let's also assume Toyota Limited is also undertaking auto insurance as a company. So you can see what we're doing right, right now. You are able to add each of these customers under their relevant insurance type or category. So that way you'll be able to differentiate your customers by the insurance that they have undertaken. So let's quickly add the next one. So let's say we have jazz. So this comes under life insurance. So you can see how you're able to add. So you can add multiple names under each insurance type. So this makes it easy for you to categorize your customers by their insurance. So when you're talking to a customer, you really don't have to start asking the customer what insurance policy did you subscribe to. By looking at the names on the system, you're able to tell the type of insurance the customer subscribed to. And then again, you're able to see the profitability <coughs> excuse me, of each of these insurance segments. 
uh, as a business and then be able to see the one that is not performing more then if you able to put all these things together at the end of the month you can tell the insurance type you should stop promoting and the one you should pay more attention to just by categorizing your business by segment and also categorizing your customers to by the insurance type like here we've added the class list so you appreciate this one we get to the report section of our system so let's quickly move on to other type so we've added policyholders and customers categorized by insurance. And then we have we have created departments or categories. That's why you have the business insurance, life insurance, home insurance, auto insurance under the class list. Then we have the insurance provider uh, themselves. Now, ins the insurance providers are the main insurance company. So they are your vendor. So you go back to your home, you add them as a vendor. So you come to new vendor, new vendor so we have america insurance group opening balance now look at this part which is very important assuming that as at the time we're setting up this system you have certain amount of money that you're yet to remit to the insurance provider that's going to sit in your account as a payable balance so we are going to input that right here what does it tell you it means that the, your, you are yet to remit this balance to the insurance company so you will come here you add that as your payable balance then you can impute all the relevant information about this insurance you click on okay so you can also come here again add new vendor and say this guys tig insurance group so do we have any balance payable to them if you don't you, you add them like this so the difference between the first one and second one is that the first one is telling you that we're supposed to remit three hundred and forty thousand usd to american insurance group which is the premium we've collected that are yet to be remitted like i told you before when you collect premium from your insurance uh customers or from your policy holders the premium doesn't belong to you so it would be wrong for you to recognize that as an income you're supposed to treat as a liability the income portion of your premium is the commission that you are earning which is which is based on the agreement you've had with your insurance provider so that could be five to ten percent so this is very important i'm going to show you how to do that customization shortly so this is how you add your vendors to the system and then you go back to home so let's look at other so i'm just taking them one after the other based on the outline now how does insurance company make money they make money from commission and on premium now how are we going to customize this commission end of premium like i said if you treat commission if you treat the premium as an income the books of the insurance company will be over bloated and that will not be correct so your bank account too um will be, will be showing balances that is completely less than what you're expecting as an income so let's quickly discuss how to treat that so from from in accounting uh for in accounting treatment when you receive money that doesn't belong to you what happened Number one, your bank account increases. The second leg, which is supposed to be created, is not an income because it's not your money. That second leg, which is created, should be a liability account. So we're going to create premium payable as a liability. So we're going to have premium premium payable and premium disbursed are not the same. Premium disbursed is an expense, which is direct cost. But premium payable is a liability. So we'll come back to the chart of account. Like I told you, everything starts and ends with chart of accounts. So you come back here we're not going to add our account payable so let's um do this let's go to the chart of account again so let me locate account payable i'm trying to choose something Okay, this is what I'm looking for. Account payable. So you would edit this account payable and call this premium payable. So let's expand it. Insurance premium payable. So that's like unpaid premium. Premium you are yet to remit to the insurance company. So the insurance premium or payable which sits in your book as a liability. You can see the 340000 payable to American Insurance Group which we are yet to pay to them. So the moment we disburse this money, our insurance premium payable becomes zero. And then what happened? Automatically, we would have 
our um, the premium disbursed increased by the same percentage. So let's go back to list item lists. Now we want to add two things to this record. We're adding two things. The first one is the premium paid by the client. This is the premium paid by the client. Now, ordinarily, we would have said the premium paid by the client should go to our income account. Just like we said, this is not an income. This is a liability. So you come here, you take this to insurance premium payable. Not associate an item with sales tax pay. One of those one. Maybe. Okay, so let's um let's do this. I think the system is not allowing us to map it to insurance payable account. So we are going to create new and then insurance premium. Payables. Okay, so I'm going to edit that back to account payable and zeroize it. So you can see insurance premium payable right here. So which is a liability, and then you click on okay. Like I said, this one doesn't belong to you. It doesn't belong to you. Both uh insurance premium payable as account payable and insurance premium payable as a liability, they are all liability, but only that system is not allowing us to map it directly to that account. So we're going to click OK right here. You can see it's still insurance premium payables is a liability so let's go back to our chart of account right here so you can see here insurance premium payable sorry this should be seen as other current liability yes this is correct so here we're going to change this back to our account payable so we And then click on OK. So this is it. And then let's click on close. So the 40,000 that sits in that record, 340,000 that sits here, that sits here as 340, was supposed to sit under insurance premium payable. So let's come back to this place. So I'm going to take this out. Both are still liability, but I'm just trying to uh, classify them to the right um, account name. The account type still, the account type is still liability, so there's no key difference. So I'll come here. I'll make journal entries. So this will be insurance premium payable against opening balance so this will be 340,000 naira USD sorry 340,000 USD and then the name of American insurance group and then under what insurance type so let's say this is for business insurance then I'll click on OK sorry I have to go back to that to edit the dates to the 31st of December 2022. So this is fine. Okay, so now we have our account properly set up. So insurance premium payable 340,000 USD. So we have this set up right now. So what have we done so far? We've added the premium paid. So when they pay premium, automatically it goes to insurance premium payables account. And then the second leg goes to your bank account, which is the bank is debited, insurance premium payable is credited. Because this is not our money, we're supposed to add another type of uh, income, which is the commission on premium. Now, when you're adding commission on premium in QuickBooks, you will see that the account type has service non-inventory power. We're going to select other charge. Other charge lets you set your premium as a percentage. That's the beauty of other charge. You're going to set your premium as a percentage. So you come here, you go to other charge. So you come to commission. So 
you're supposed to use a discount, not other charge. Sorry, that was a mistake. Commission from premium. Why are we using this? The reason we are using this is because the reason we're using this is because when we select our commission, the money is supposed to reduce the um, total amount paid as premium. So if I receive the premium of 100,000 USD and my commission is 5%, so automatically I'm supposed to remit 95,000 USD to the insurance company and not 100. So that's why we're setting the, the commission as a discount. It's supposed to reduce the value of that premium. So it's the net that we're going to remit to the insurance company. So here it will be 5%, depending on the agreement, and then we click on OK. So we, can, we have done two things. We set the commission on premium, and then we'll set the premium paid. So I'll show you how this is going to help us track all premium paid as well as commission on premium in our book. So we've done that, and I hope you understand how to do the setup for the premium paid and commission on premium. Then the direct cost, we discussed that before. So the next part is how do we create an invoice for insurance policy? How do we capture the percentage? How do we receive payment and then record deposit into our bank? Now, before we go to that um, transaction case scenarios, I want I like to combine record deposit and receive payment together. The reason is that um, if we as a business have a policy or have an internal policy that all payment must be directly to our bank. We really don't have to receive payments and then come to record deposit again. So you go to edit, you select preference, you go to payments, and then uncheck this. Every payment you receive, the system automatically takes them to on the wizard phone as a default account, but we do not want to do that. So that's why I am unchecking that. And then we will um, activate record deposit on receive payment window. So that's the advantage of what I've just done. If I receive payments now, I'm able to select the bank where the money was paid into. So if I go to receive payments, you can see right here that you now have deposits too. So if I did not uncheck on the budget fund, system would not display this. And that means all the money I've received goes to on the budget fund instead of the actual bank account where the money was paid into. So let's quickly demonstrate the business of an insurance brokerage company or an insurance agency. Let's look at the workflow from the invoice that you create for insurance policies of receiving payment up to record deposit and how that is going to reflect in our book. So first, we're going to create an invoice. Now we want to invoice a customer. We want to invoice a customer. Now, do you really need to invoice a customer as an insurance brokerage? Yes, you need to invoice a customer so let's go back to let's say we're invoicing mr jude smith for health insurance services so we we'll then go to item what is the item so i'm going to take out quantity if you want to track quantity you can as well go ahead if the insurance um uh, policies has it that you you need to check the number of months that the customer is paying for so you can say uh premium paid for 12 months so we can change this quantity to 12 so let's quickly do a bit of customization on our invoice so our invoice here under the column i'm going to change the quantity to months so the month help us to track the number of months or the period the insurance covers and then so that's that's cool so let's look at under the class we can say insurance type let's just use type for class and then we we'll click on okay click on okay so we have this here so what's the type of insurance they are subscribing for they are subscribing for health insurance remember this guy is under health insurance now this is insurance uh, premium paid so for how many months he paid for 12 months so Description will say being insurance premium paid for 12 months covering January 2023 to December 2023. Then um, the rate per month is 10,000 USD. So 12 times 10,000 USD, that's 120,000 USD. So let's do 
um, 20,000 USD right here. This is it. So the date, we have that here. Now, this is the money this guy has paid, 240,000 USD. But our agreement or our contract with the insurance provider has it that um, we're going to be earning 5% on this 240,000 USD. So we we'll come here, still health insurance, then commission. Now, the money received right here will not be recognized as an income. The money received right here automatically goes to insurance premium payable because we're supposed to remit it. So it only hits our account, but doesn't reflect on the income head as a credit side. It reflects on the liability side of our book. So for us to capture the commission portion of this money, we will then come to commission on premium. Now you can see here, commission on premium is automatically calculated. So being commission and on health insurance premium. So this is what the system is going to recognize as our income, which is 12,000 USD and not 240,000. Now, when it recognizes 12,000, then the actual payable, actual insurance premium payable is 228,000 USD and not 240 because we're supposed to take the commission portion of the money and then remit to the uh, and remit the balance to the insurance company. So this is how you treat um commission income and premium paid by a policyholder as an insurance broker. So when I click save and close right here, we're going to check our report to see how this is going to reflect in our report. We'll click on save and close. And then let's go to report. Let's start with the profit or loss. Profit or loss, what is our income? You can see the commission income is 12,000 USD. That's the commission income. And then the other part is the, sorry, the commission income right there is um, a bit edit. So let's do something. Let's go back to our invoice. So let's take this out. I, want, I need to correct something here. So item and then this is going to be. So let's go back to item new other charge. So another thing we can do rather than going through this process again, which is going to be a lot easier for us, is this. Now let's go back to insurance, health insurance. Let's try this again. Jude. The type of insurance is health, premium paid 12 months, and then 20,000 per month. That's 240,000. FD. So, health. So let's let's check something. Add new. Commission. Commission on premium. So this should be other charge. Five percent. So this commission income and then under health insurance. So you can see this is the this is going to be the payable in the name of that customer's account, which is two hundred and fifty-two thousand. So like I said, there is a difference between insurance broker and an insurance um, and an insurance agent. An insurance agent acts on behalf of the insurance company, while an insurance broker acts on behalf of the customer. So this is the commission you're paying to the insurance broker for that services.
and then I will click on save and close. So automatically in the books of the insurance company, this will become a payable in the name of that customer. So another way we can treat this, which I think will be a lot more easier and not confusing, is to take out this right here. This is it. Now we're going to save this, save and close. If we go to reports, you will see that under our reports, we don't have any income right here, which is fine. So what I did was to take out, um, let's take out this commission income too. So we only have the premium paid. Now, if we go back to our companies and financials balance sheets, you will see that under our reliability, you have insurance premium payable, which is 588. What's the makeup of this? Double click on this, you have 240,000 here and then the previous payable balance that you have in the name of the other insurance company, which is American Insurance Group. Then, how do you recognize the commission? Another easy way to recognize the commission is to go to company, make journal entry, and then that will be insurance premium payable against commission on premium income. So why are we doing this? The insurance premium payable is 240,000 Naira. But out of 240,000 Naira, we're supposed to recognize 12,000 Naira as our commission. So you credit commission with 12,000 USD and uh, you debit this is with 12,000 USD, sorry. And then that will be in the name of this cost customer and what class which is health insurance. And then you click on save and close. So let's look at our report again. You have your reports, companies and financials, profit or loss. You can see our commission income is 12,000 USD. And then if we go to report again, our balance sheet, you will again see that our payable has reduced right here. You can see minus 12,000 USD, right? There. So which is the commission portion of this premium paid. So that's how you treat the income. So you use invoice to create the to record the premium paid by the uh, customer. So let's look at Toyota Limited under auto commission. The class is auto. The type is auto. The account the from the premium paid. So you can say beam premium paid for auto insurance. And then for how many months was it paid? This let's assume this was paid for 24 months. And then here is 30,000 a month. And then that's 720. So this 720 becomes a payable. Save and close. If we go to reports and uh, the companies and financials balance sheets under our insurance premium payable right here, you can see it adds to total insurance payable to 7. But are we going to remit the 720 to the insurance company? No. We're not supposed to remit the 720 to the insurance company. We also have a commission of 5% from that money. So 5% of 720 will give us 36,000 USD. So you come to company, make journal entry, and then this will be insurance premium payable against commission of income. So this 36,000 USD, it will be debited with 36,000 USD. And you can say being commission on premium paid by Toyota. And then the name of the customer is Toyota. Remember the class, auto insurance. And then you click on save and close. So if we go to reports and check our PL, you will see that PL has increased. Click double click on it. You can see the this is the commission portion of each the premium paid 12,000 USD and 36,000 USD. So why I can't use the premium? I can't use the other charge right here is because one is going to reduce the value and this becomes negative in our PL. And if I use other charge, other charge is going to increase that premium. Now, depending on your state policy, if your state policy says that it's the customer that pays the commission and not the insurance company, meaning that you're supposed to pay both the premium and the commission portion of that premium to the insurance company, then the other, the other process works. What's the other procedure? The other procedure is 
let's use this as an instance. I can then come to other type. Let's say this person is undertaking travel insurance. So the type will be travel insurance. The item here will be premium paid and then being commission on travel, being premium paid on travel insurance. So what's the insurance type? Travel. What's the number of months? 12. How much is the paying per month? 5,000 USD. So now for some insurance company, it could the policy could be that it is the customer that pays the commission and not the insurance company. So that we are going to add new on that item and then select other charge. So this will then be commission on premium, commission end. This is commission end and then 5% which goes to um, commission on premium accounts. And then you click on OK. So 5%, so this will be 5% is 3,000. And then travel insurance. So we need that the customer will pay both the premium of 60,000 USD and also the commission of 30,000 USD. So if it's the customer that is paying the, the commission on that premium, you have this. But if it's the insurance company, the first process, but I do not think that the customer is supposed to pay the premium on the a commission on the premium to the insurance brokerage. The insurance company brokerage should have an agreement with the insurer and then are able to come up with something agreed um, insurance uh, percentage, insurance commission that is due to them on every premium paid. So, so we'll discuss that. And then the next one is to receive payments. Now, if we're receiving payments from the um, policyholders, let's say we're receiving payment from Toyota Limited, you can see that you're going to receive the total amount from them. So you're receiving 720,000 USD. And then that money is being paid into Bank of America account. And then you click on save and close. Then you can as well go to other policyholders to receive their payments. So let's say Jude Smith you can receive this payment into. So let's say this payment was made into a PayPal wallet. You click save and close. Now, with all these payments we're receiving, if you go to use register, they all reflect in the account you can see the 70 720 that was received and then for the paypal wallet this is the 240 that was also received into that account so we discussed how to create an invoice capture commission receive payments then how do you record business expenses the same thing the same way you record business expenses for any type of business that's what you do in an insurance if an expense is due but not paid then you use enter bill. So enter bill is for outstanding expenses. So if I have, let's assume we want to pay a company insurance expert group. So let's assume these guys are engaged in training our staff on the business of insurance. So you go to insurance expert group and then you call this professional services, professional fees, and then you can enter the amount you pay them and then if it's not related to any customer now to what class assuming you they want to train you on how to run the business of health insurance you click on health insurance how to sell health insurance so you have that right here now remember when you use a bill you assume that payment was not made at the point where services was provided or where the expenses was incurred so that's why you use bill to track that but if it's a cash payment you use right check so anytime you want to settle this outstanding you go to pay bills maybe will display all the outstanding bills that you owe your uh, service providers right here and then you select the bank where the money is coming from and then you click on save and close or pay selected bill so that means we've paid that bill but if it's a cash expenses you use right check right check assumes that you're setting that transaction at that point where it's happening or where it occurs there's no need for you to postpone to a later date so that's the difference between your right check and then enter bill then we have the banking transaction so for the banking transaction we've discussed use register where you, it's like your bank statement you're able to make deposit you're able to transfer fund from one bank to another so if you want to move money from bank of america more to maybe like a paypal wallet or let's say we have a new bank account called jp morgan chase 
you can actually add them right here as a bank account and um, select the amount you want to transfer let's say 580 000 usd to that account and now interesting thing about quickbook again is that you have the option of attaching supporting documents to every windows that you create in quickbooks or every transaction that you enter so if i go to invoice let's assume there's a document the customer has to fill or approve of policy at the point of creating an invoice you can also attach that document to the system and again if there is need for you to have a document or stating the customer's profile you can as well come to customer center and then attach a document right here you can see so you have the room to attach a document probably like the customer's profile customer's information policyholders information right here so that also helps you to keep your document in e format so we will now head to our financial reports now with all that we've posted so far you are able to check number one your profit or loss by class you can see right here profit or loss by class tells you so let's let me edit this uh, for the eight thousand twenty six was class selected here let me confirm this yes class was selected so here you're able to see your profit or loss by class which is profit or loss by each of the departments let's put it all so you can see health insurance here why because we have been selected health insurance uh in the course of posting this transaction on the system so let me understand this commission on premium very well commission on premium so the class here health insurance double click on save and close okay so we have that here and then professional fees you're also able to track so with this now as you select the income and expense portion um the class on each of your income and expense transactions system automatically tell you how much you've earned from each of them so let's look at this again okay so we have that in place and then we can go to our report to and generate our balance sheets by class you can generate balance sheets for each you can see for auto insurance for business insurance for health insurance so you're able to see your balance sheet by class and then you can check as many reports as you want you can check your receivable report the payables you know, the pay payable reports and every other kind of report you want to generate as an insurance company you can see your insurance premium payable you can see with the payable for auto insurance payable for business insurance payable for health insurance so this is how you use quickbooks to manage your insurance business so if you run an insurance company and are having issues with quickbooks i hope this video is able to guide you on how to properly organize your books of record on the system and if you have questions you want us to set up your quickbooks for your insurance agency business you can as well use the link in the description to go to our website accountingsoftware.com.ng or quickbooksnigeria.com and then from there you will find our contact uh, detail right there why we don't like to display our email address on um uh, the quickbooks description sometimes is to avoid uh, spam mail so people just extract emails from different youtube uh, channels and they start sending spam mails to them so but if you are serious about getting your quickbooks right or getting your accounting software right you should be able to go to our website and then from there you will find our contact details and then do well to subscribe to this channel and then turn on the notification bell 